I'm going to show you the fastest and best ways to level up jewel crafting in New World. So jewel crafting is how you make all the different things, the earrings, the amulets, the normal rings, stuff like that, and you can customize them, whatever, get different things. So the fastest way and easiest way to level jewel crafting is to do two different things. One is if you see silver on the market, then you can buy the silver and you can make uh, silver chains or settings and then literally just throw them on the ground. You will literally craft them. Okay, hold on. You're gonna literally craft these things, go into your inventory, discard. You're literally just gonna just, that's, that's one way to do it, okay? If, if you find the silver, generally I will pay 0.5 coins per silver ingot or cheaper than that. Anything higher than that, I, I wouldn't bother. Even then it's kind of like, if you have the money, you know what I mean? Or you can go mine silver and do that. The other way is to collect as many uh, gems as you can and start making the amulets and then just basically throwing them away. That's pretty much the only way to level jewel crafting is to make stuff and just throw it away. There's really no better way to do it. So how do we get a bunch of emeralds and stuff like that? Well, the best way that I know of is to mine silver and gold. You can also find it when mining iron and star metal. Iron's not so bad for it. And there are some tricks that I'll get to in a minute. But the main one is silver is my go-to one. And for silver, I generally like to go to Canary Mine north of Everfall. There's a bunch of silver nodes at this mine, so it's a decent place to mine silver. Another good place that you can mine silver is just outside of Everfall over at uh, Midnight Den. There are a bunch of silver spawns around here, assuming no one else is competing with you for them. Finally, if you're higher level in Weaver's Fen, just by the fort, to the west of the fort, there's a bunch of silver veins over in this mountainous area. And as for gold, there's not a lot of good places early on. You can get some in Cutlass Keys up and down this uh, mountain line. But that one is uh, kind of spread out. When you get higher level, there's a really good one. Uh, I think it was right here. I don't have it uh, discovered on this playthrough, but uh, right in there somewhere. And I think in Weaver's Fen, there was, no, no, it wasn't Weaver's Fen. It was uh, the Congregation, but this is like level almost, you know, 51, 60 place. But right in through here, there is also a bunch. So those are gold and silver places that will help you get a bunch of gems. Now, as for gems, you are going to craft them at a stone cutter's table. So stone cutting tables look like this, obviously. You're going to go in here. You're going to need to cut them. Now, different gems use different moats. As you get to higher gems, you'll need wisps and then essence. And then finally, you will need quintessence. Now, in order to make those, you will have to go to an alchemist table, which I'll get to in a second. So you are going to go through these and you are going to cut these. You're also going to need weak solvent for every single one. I don't know if it uses higher for the purple ones, but I know all the way to blue even will use weak solvent. And you're just going to craft these. Now, the higher level the gem, the higher level stone cutting table you will need. So if you want to do the flawed ones, you only need a stone cutting table tier three. If you want the green ones, it's also tier three. If you want blue ones, however, it's tier four uh, stone cutting table. And for the purple ones, it is tier five stone cutting table. It also requires higher stone cutting skill in order to do each one. 150 for the purple, 100 for the blues, 50 for the greens, and so on. So once you have all that, I'll show you the alchemy table now for getting those wisps. So now we're at the alchemy table or the arcane repository more specifically in this game. So to, in here, you can go all the way down to the bottom and there will be Wisps, Essence, and once you're high enough level, there'll also be Quintessence. Now for these, you're going to need the moats, and the moats just scale up. It is craft up, basically. To get the moats, if you are not familiar with moats, you get them from all the different plants. When you see those, like, uh, plants that breathe fire, or the shock bulbs, or all those weird, like, plants, they give you moats. Also, there are little snails and random things that give you moats as well. So uh, there's also sometimes you'll see like uh, mining ones will be blight craig and and uh, I forget what the different ones are like rocks that are like electric rocks and death rocks whatever they'll also give you moats so you collect the moats and then you come to an alchemy table now in order to make the wisps you'll need different tiers of the alchemy table so for the wisps you will need an arcane repository tier three to scale up it takes five in order to get one wisp but then for the essence you need four of the earth wisps so that's going to be twenty moats five and then you need four of those so that comes to twenty moats to get one essence. For the Essence, you need a Repository Tier 4. And then for the Quintessence, it's going to be another 3, so 60 of the moats to get one Quintessence. And it takes an Arcane Repository Tier 5. And all of this is just so that you can break down your gems and cut them so that you can come back over to here and you can make your jewelry, which also will require higher level outfitting stations. So the Flawed uses Tier 2, 
the normal use tier four, not tier four, tier three, I mean, and then brilliant use tier four, and then the purple ones use tier pristine use uh, tier five. So that is how to get started on that's how to do all that. Uh, it's like I said before, there's not really a fast way to level. You've got to get silver. The only real way to level is to get silver and just burn it or to get gems, craft these things, and just discard them. As bad as it is, maybe I'll let someone watch this video a year from now and they'll have added a different way, but on release, that was like the only way to do it, and it was kind of, kind of horrible. Now, as for the crafting itself, it will take three different things depending on what you're making. Amulets will take a chain and a setting, um, and then the rings will take a band and a setting. And the earrings will take a hook and a setting. And then you'll also need one ingot. Now you can switch these out for whatever you want. You can use gold hooks. You can also use platinum hooks. And I think there might be something after platinum. I totally forget off the top of my head. And you'll go down here and you unlock them. So at level 50, you can start making gold ones. At level 100, you can make platinum ones. And if I scroll down, maybe there'll be one down here if there's another one. I just honestly don't remember. So I'm not going to waste your time on that. There might be one more. Oh, there is. Yeah, Orca Kellium, however you say it. Or calcum. I don't know how to say it. So yeah, the, the bands out of those ones. And so what that does, it doesn't change much of anything. But you see up here this gear score? You'll get a random roll between this, depending on your jewel crafting skill. The higher your jewel crafting skill, the higher potential gear score that you can get. When you use better hooks and better things, it will increase the average gear score that you'll roll. It's still random. But the, these numbers will go up, so that range will go higher. So it's basically the equivalent of increasing your jewel crafting skill by using higher grade materials. If you go back to an older one when you're higher jewel crafting, I'm jewel crafting 107. If you go back to a flawed one, you'll see I'm way up in this range. When I craft one of these, it'll be between 225 gear score and 280. Whereas if you're just starting a jewel crafting, you may notice it's going to be between 200 and maybe 250 or so. And this will keep going all the way till it hits the high end, which for this... If I was uh, jewel crafting 200, it would probably be 250 to 300 or something like that. I don't know, something along those lines. When you get a higher gear score roll, it'll also increase the required level. So if you get really high level, you won't be able to make gear anymore for your low level friend who just bought the game. Also, you can add a crafting perk in order to guarantee different attributes onto your jewelry when you craft it. Additionally, you can use Azoth to guarantee these different perks and attributes. So if you go on here, you see there's a medium chance, but if I use Azoth, now the very high chance, which as far as I can tell is a 100% chance, I've never had it not do it when I do this. So that's how you can guarantee rolls if you have the Azoth to spare. Azoth will not increase gear score, however, it will only guarantee these different slots. Finally, every single piece, every single gem has a different attribute that it will give you. So uh, Amber will give nature absorption, Ruby will get fire absorption, Jasper will get strike damage absorption, uh, Opal is elemental damage, Onyx is physical damage, and so on and so forth. That is the same no matter what you make. And when you get the higher ones like Brilliant, all it does is increase the numbers. It does not change what it's going to do. You're not going to go to Brilliant and suddenly now it's fire instead of you know, lightning or something like that. So that's how that works. So you just pick what rings you want and I mean, what gems you want, and it's going to be the same. You can expect the same thing every single time, no matter what. The last thing I can think to mention here is that the different slots, you have different perks. I've noticed earrings have totally different perks they can have compared to uh, amulets, for example. So you can get earrings that give things like uh, plus five gear score average when armor smithing and 20% uh, cooldown reduction on using potions and just all sorts of wacky things on earrings. And then rings have their own set of different enchantments or perks they can have. And same thing goes for amulets, totally different perks they can have just on the, based on the fact that it is an amulet. One other thing I'm going to mention real fast is you can break down your gems down in here. It's not really good for jewel crafting experience, but you can make this stuff called gemstone dust, which will uh, increase absorption of elemental damage types for 20 seconds or until you take damage nine times. I don't really feel like they're that good, but in siege wars, you know, siege gameplay, maybe you can find a use for them, but don't forget that they exist. As you level up, you get better ones. There's weak, then there's common. Then there's strong, and then I think there's another one down here somewhere, and they increase uh, the number every time, 400%, and then the last one's going to be 500% here. It is powerful. 500% for 20 seconds. So that's the last thing. That's pretty much all that I can think to tell you about uh, dual crafting. Hopefully this helps you. Uh, I'm doing dual crafting for my guilds, or my company, so I've been sitting here doing this. I think I know just about everything there is to know about it. If I forgot to mention anything, just ask in the questions below because it's hard to remember every single little detail when making a video.
but that is the gist of jewel crafting fastest ways to level it best ways to level it how it works how to do all the different things different benches you need uh, what all it gives and all that hopefully you found this helpful and make sure that you are subscribed to this channel if you want to keep up with these uh, new world guides i made one about engineering you can go try to find that and i plan on making guides for every single crafting profession in the game over the next week hopefully so make sure you subscribe for that. I'm also looking to make uh, gold making guides and leveling guides to help you explain, help you understand fastest way to level and fastest ways, to, best ways to make gold or coins, I guess it's called in this game. So make sure you subscribe for all that. But as for jewel crafting, that's all I got. So hopefully now you understand jewel crafting in New World.